Okay, so now this lecture we assume you have made the wise choice of a stable scheme. Then the error, the truncation error, now actually matters. And the most times when you use a code that somebody else wrote, uh, hopefully they are wise enough to choose a stable scheme, so you get reasonable numbers. And then it's it's up to you, to the user of the code, to figure out is the solution accurate enough or what kind of error is in the solution and that's something we'll talk about uh, in the beginning of this lecture today so the concept we are going to discuss today is called modified equations it is based on the fact that when you discretize a differential equation using a numerical scheme the numerical scheme turns out to be maybe it is a fairly good approximation to the differential equation you want to solve. But most of the time, it is actually an even more accurate discretization of some differential equation that maybe you didn't want to solve. And that equation, the scheme is actually approximating even better. It's called the modified equation. For example, let's start with a pretty obvious example. Okay, let's start with the differential equation du dt plus a constant, capital U. So capital U is a constant, small u is a function, a solution of the PDE equal to zero. And we are up to now, we should all know what the solution to this equation look like. Right, what does the solution to this equation look like? So let's say u, let's just say u is greater than zero. What does the solution look like? It's a translation towards which direction? To the right, exactly. Okay, so it's a pure translation to the right. The solution should maintain its original shape. So let's say if I have a periodic domain, the solution should maintain its shape forever, right? But in practice, let, let us discretize this differential equation using one of the more stable schemes we discussed in the last lecture. A scheme that would even be stable using forward OLA. What is that scheme we ended up deriving? DUI DT plus U times what? backward difference or upwinding, right? In this case, the solution advances towards the right. The upwinding direction is towards where the wind comes from. That's towards the left. So towards the left, that involves ui and ui minus 1, right? ui minus 1 is towards the left. So minus divide by delta x, you do Taylor series analysis. That is the appropriate discretization. That is first order accurate. So that is equal to zero. And if you did that in your class, that would be great. But if you didn't, let's, uh, if, you did it, if you did it in your project, that's great. If you didn't, let's code up a scheme like that and figure out, and let's take a look at the solution to see how the discretization modifies the behavior of the equation. So let's say du dt upwind. This is t and u. So we are, let's still use OD45 to integrate this equation uh, to make sure the time derivative doesn't really... So, so OD45 has a, a lot more accurate time derivative than the spatial discretization we are using, right? So, so let's use OD45 uh, to try to remove a lot of the time discretization error and focus on spatial discretization. So u is periodic and let's assume u is in the domain of 0 to 2 pi. The first u is at grid point 0, the last u is at grid point 2 pi minus delta x, right? Because the solution at 2 pi is actually exactly equal to the solution at 0, so we don't have to remember that. So n is equal to the length of u and dx is equal to 2 pi divided by n. 
So n grid points, in this case, periodic domain, n grid points, n intervals. Right, because we didn't store the solution at the very end. So, du dx is equal to two things, because we are looking at towards the left, and the very first grid point when we are looking towards the left is actually the very last grid point. So the first grid point is u end minus u1 divided by delta x. So that's the very first grid point. And uh, the rest, I can write it as u of 2 to end minus u of 1 to end minus 1 divided by delta x. So this is a this is a kind of a, we call a vectorized way of coding that works very well in MATLAB or Python or any of the interpreted language. If you're coding Julia, you can you don't have to do that. It's still fast. But like if you have MATLAB or Python, vectorizing a calculation like this instead of going over a for loop is going to be a lot faster than going over the for loop. So, so this is basically looping for i goes from 2 to n. This is ui, this is ui minus 1, right? Yes? Yes, the first line should be u1 minus un, thank you. All right. So yeah, ui minus ui minus 1, yeah. ui minus 1 is actually u end in this case. Okay. So my du dt is then equal to according to this formula minus big U times uh, let's let's put let's for example say okay U is equal to one just to um, just to serve as an example minus U times du dx. All right, so that is our function, and let's use OD forty five to integrate that. And uh, so, for example, let's say x is equal to uh, 1, 2, so let's 0 to 99. For example, let's use 100 points divided by 100. So that is our x. Uh, we should multiply by 2 pi, right? So, so that is our x. And uh, the way we start, what kind of function do we want to start? Let's just uh, start with uh, with uh, with a bump, right? Let's start with a bump and see how the bump evolves. And uh, u zero is it? I mean, a, a good way to an easy way to make a bump is to take a, a sine function, so sine of sine of x over two. So x goes from zero to pi. So so x over x goes from 0 to 2 pi, so x over 2 goes from 0 to pi. So a sine bump. Let's take it to the 16th power. Okay, so if you plot x and u0, you see like a, a bump. That's also a periodic function. All right. Okay, so now we have our initial condition. Let's say t and u is equal to Oh, by the way, let me ask you, if I want the analytic solution to advect over the entire domain and come back to exactly the same location, so that the analytical solution is going to look like the same as this one, how much time should I integrate the solution for? The length of the domain over u, right? So length of the domain, u is like length per time. So u is 1, the length of domain is 2 pi, so I want to integrate by 2 pi. Okay, so t u is equal to od45 of at du dt upwind. Uh, what's the second parameter? Is it time? 0, 2 pi, and my u0. So that is da, 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 not consistent. I think again I have this... Uh, I should be doing this instead of that. Okay, so I think it's 
probably because u is a is a vertically oriented vector so let's do that again now we have a u so u uh, od45 obviously determine that this interval is too big as a time step so it automatically divided this interval from 0 to 2 pi into 229 sub intervals and the time integration on that so t is a vector like that and u is like that so we are only interested in the solution at the very end right so let's plot it hold on so we can we can plot it on the same plot and the plot x and u end let's plot it in red that's our numerical solution after this thing at vex over one period and the legal solution again should be exactly the same as the blue one numerical solution the red one can somebody tell me like what's what do you, can you describe qualitatively describe the difference between the analytical solution, which is blue, and numerical solution, which is red. It diffused out. It diffused out. It's almost as if we are solving not the advection equation, but an advection diffusion equation. Exactly.